Hi uh, everyone, so I'm going to be basically refactoring and cleaning up this project that I started six years ago or so when I first started programming. Um, it was brought to my attention again because somebody opened a pull request which fixed like this one bug, which is cool. Um, and what I want to do is kind of go back and clean it up because it's it's a bit of a mess. There's like there's no tests. I've got committed minified code. I've got a jar file committed in here. And I've written a post about it, which I'm going to link in the description as well, um, about everything that's kind of wrong with it, especially like these two licenses and that kind of thing. So I thought as quick as I can, I'll run through this and just clean it up. Um, I'm going to show the whole workflow so that people that don't normally do this sort of thing can see how somebody after working in like JavaScript and front end for years would approach this kind of thing. Um, so I'm basically going to start at the beginning. I don't think I even have this cloned. So let's go ahead and clone this down. Uh, and then straight away, I'm going to need package.json because there's no package. This thing isn't even on NPM. Um, so my plan was basically to write test suite first so that um, I have some assurances when I'm refactoring. Uh, so let's just open the source code in Emacs. Um, I did use Vim up until recently. Uh, and since I've been doing a lot more Lisp, um, I thought I'd give in and start using Emacs. Oh wow. Well. Yeah, so all these syntax errors are because I use standard now, uh, which is an entirely different linting system. So stuff like these semicolons, they need to go. So we're going to start off with a test suite and we may as well make this as easy as possible. So I'm probably going to grab a bar uh, purely just because it's pretty simple and quite fast. Although it's kind of overloaded. Now nah, let's go with a simple route. Let's go tape. So this is probably my favorite testing tool just because it doesn't get in the way so I can do this recording yeah cool um, I'm recording on OBS not Linux for the first time so let's initialize the repository so like, oh okay um, let's just call it color American spelling sorry version one and let's take the description from here I'm gonna keep going to the wrong desktop Okay, that's wrong still. So entry point is going to be src slash color.js. I'm going to change that. Test command, we don't have one right now. Git repository, yep. It's going to be color. And that's me. And I'm going to change the license because I'm just that mean. So now what I want to do is file so this is 30 second there we go I want to first of all fix this package.json because I managed to put a hyphen in here so I use Emacs with vim bindings because I can't drop vim entirely uh, but I get like these nice shells and stuff so let's move the make file to make file because it's meant to have a capital M and let's create src create test I'll do. So what I'm going to want to do is work out how to use tape. If I can remember. So it's just tape and then your tests. Cool. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Hmm. That's cool. So inside here, I'm just going to do tape. Um, test start r start js pretty much as they describe it so now let's keep this terminal open as well i've got them in the right directory let's save dev tape and now i should be able to do npm test but it won't do anything oops yeah cool so let's remove this column in js 
remove this build directory because I don't care about that anymore. It's old stuff. Um, I keep going to OpenVim. Of course I've had it. Uh, let's open up the make file. Wrong one. That one. Um, I'm not going to want any of these to be honest. I'm not even sure if I want the make file. No. Let's get rid of it. Yep. Um, and then B delete. Combination of Vim and Emacs commands. So they're all gone. SLC contains SLC. I, I could use Emacs for like moving files around and stuff, but honestly, I just find the shell a lot easier. Um, so load modules now contains so much. One dependency, and it did that. Cool. I probably could use yarn as well, but oh well. So what I want to do is start a test file. So that's going to be, uh, oh well, I'm in the right directory. Call it test slash, um, let's just call it core.js. Yep. And I want to do, I'm going to be assuming you're on a fairly modern node version. So I'm on 6.1, so I can do like const. Const take equals require, sorry, not that equals require tape. Cool. And what I want to do is this. So it's simple enough, the API is simple. What I need to do is make sure that I'm covering most of the API here. So I should be able to give it a color and get an array out. So uh, test to array. Can I keep the scribe blocks? I don't think I can. Okay, let's uh, rename this file. Rename test core to test to array to JS. I shouldn't have done that. Let's not do that. Let's just go color to JS. Let's keep it simple. So I'm going to test uh, the fact that um, to array so it can convert different things so it does nothing to existing arrays. use the shorthand format as well because it's just nicer so I can do uh, t plan do one I think I need to set up the indentation btrt is detect uh, that that okay no one knows it's two so t plan uh, okay so what I want to do is const color equals require dot dot slash slc slash color dot js so is this actually I define it as lowercase but I made the project uppercase I have no idea why it's really strange um, it hasn't actually detected it yet so I've got turn installed and it should be Auto completing these. Yeah, there, here we go. Yeah, see? It knows what they are. Pretty cool. So if I say color to array uh, one, two, three, uh, I should get. So t dot dp core. Um, I can't remember what order it is in dp core. A, B, message extra. One is expected. I always forget these. So it's actual first, then expected. Okay. Out should be one, two, three. So then we could do NPM test. And it failed. Cool. So what is that? 
that is because you can't even import it. You see, this is a global object. Oh, that's that's just lovely. That's like, yeah. Okay, well, we have to go into here and monkey batch it then. Wonderful. And now it should run. Yeah, cool. So I just want to write a few of these. So test. Uh, I also want to check. Begins with RGB. So Probably hear me typing really loud, sorry about that. So I'm gonna say um Plan one again, you have to say plan for all of these. I think if you use AV, you don't, but I don't really mind it. It's simple enough. Uh, there's hardly any dependencies, so, so let's say color dot to array. This is gonna be the test harness essentially. I'll copy and paste this over and over. So we're gonna do like RGB uh, one, two, three should give me out one, two, three. I'll probably run that in like node mon or something. Cool. Two passing, I think. Yeah, um, I can actually do this as well. Install this and then go to package of JSON. Uh, yes. And then with the tester, we pipe it into for set another word for tap which is quite nice there we go it's a bit prettier so I want to do this for all of them so test to array uh, converts if I can type I'm too tired um, converts so these hash values so uh, hex values to arrays Oh, two array convert. No, okay, that's just a test. And then function, and we'll give it t dot plan one. Uh, const out equals color dot to array pound uh, ff zero zero ff. Should probably make these a bit more complex, to be honest. That'd be right. Output out 2 by 5, 0, 2 by 5. And that's cool. Yep. <coughs> do I have node mon? I do. Okay. Uh, node mon. Uh, I can't remember how you tell it to run. Oh, okay. Dash x. Begin test. Okay, cool. Now whenever I write a file, it should, yeah, so it's going to run the test every time I change the file now. Um, so what else do I have to check here? So I do some funny stuff here. What is this elf? If it is a name, loop through them until we find it. Oh, okay, so I can give it a name. I can say, um, I can turn this into an array. So I can say, test to array converts um, color names. I'm gonna use the American spelling everywhere, just for consistency. Uh, do plan one, const out. If you don't do a plan or you get the plan wrong, it'll wait forever to make it easier to do async stuff. So this, and we'll do t.dp call um, out. And whatever the color for this is. So these are like the web standard colors, I think. Um, yep, cool, four for passing. So this is the two array done. Like, I've tested all the branches, which is all I care about. Like, 
can take an RGB, you can take a hash, you can take a name, and that's about it. Uh, so two RGB just takes whatever you give it. So this is the way I, I made it kind of generic. You could give it anything. This color can be a hash or an RGB or something. And because I called two array on all of them, it means you can kind of, you can give it whatever you want and it turns into RGB. It's very, it coerces everything. So test um, to RGB. I don't need to test every case now, uh, or as long as I just check, to be honest, I can just, let's just do this. <laughs> let's just copy them and say uh, to RGB, there's gonna be a lot of space. Um, so it converts arrays. So if I say to RGB, I get, Uh, RGB, one, two, three. Do I join on, so I join on common space. So it's just comment out always now. So <laughs> that key binding was G, C, J, no, sorry, uh, G, C, big G. It's uh, binding from uh, Vim commentary, but ported through Mac. So I can also do uncomment until there. If you've never seen like Emacs and everything before, or Vim at least, this is basically Vim in Emacs now. Um, it's gonna look a little bit confusing, but. So 2RGB converts, does nothing to RGB strings. I don't really want it to mangle an RGB string. I'm probably gonna find bugs here. So 2RGB123 gives me 2RGB123. Yes, it does. Cool. And uh, two array converts oh, to RGB converts hex values. So look at that Vim. See? Oh fuck, I broke it. Um. Oh yeah. So this is kind of all pretty self self-explanatory. So to RGB b converts color names i'm sorry if this is repetitive feel free to skip ahead i'm not going to be doing any editing i'm just going to leave it all in so you can see exactly what i did um oops. actually i want to yeah i'm going to leave everything in just so you can see everything i do my entire workflow um everything that's kind of going through my head I'll try and keep talking, but I might get distracted. So I want to do two hex as well. So I want to take, it's exactly the same. Cool. So I can literally just, <laughs> I can do it again. Um, and I'm going to get like full test coverage from this, essentially, like 100% every line, which is quite nice. I can do this neat thing here. So I can substitute two RGB with uh, two hex. Look at that, it's so cool. And boop, all done. So you get this kind of like neat interactive, um, yeah, I know it's gonna fail. Two hex converts arrays. So I give it an array and a get. But what do you get? What do you get if you do one, two, three? I don't even know. Is it just zero, one, zero to zero, three? Uh, yeah, that was right. Um, if I keep these numbers low, it's gonna be easy. Uh, so two hex does nothing to RGB strings. This is actually not true. Converts RGB strings. Oops. So RGB that gives us uh, zero one zero two zero three. And there's something else I can check here, which would be neat. Which would be the thing that that guy fixed today. He was from South Africa, I think, which is cool. Um, uh, two hex converts hex values or does nothing to hex values. Cool. And two hex converts color names. So I'm just gonna Google that and I will get the hex, which is that. Sorry if my uh, Resolution is really low as well. 
Ah, uh, sorry, I deleted it and it yanked it to my clipboard again. It's something that Emacs does wrong compared to Vim, and it annoys me. And I haven't worked out how to change it yet. Like, Vim has a separate clipboard to your system clipboard, but Emacs doesn't appear to. Uh, and I just use the command to uppercase until the end of the word, which is useful. So that's all of the two hex ones done. Um, to name as well. So what I can do is say, if I give it that, I should get disk. What kind of name is that? So this one is a little more, um, this is interesting because I'm expecting false if there isn't a match. Whereas now I would probably write that as null, but I need to test the existing code first. Um, so I can give it like the hash of this color. So let's take these again. I just completely missed that. JK, there we go. And I want to substitute in this space um, two hex for two name. I think two name. Is it? I can't scroll up. There we go. Two name. Yes, I do. There we go. And I want to say that if I give it the array for dark sea green, wherever that is, this one. If I give it the array for it, I just did the complete wrong one. There we go. No, I, I, I don't even know. There we go. Uh, if I give it the array for it, I get dark C green. So I'm gonna get three fail here, hopefully, yes. So it's just these bottom three. So two name converts RGB strings. So if I give it RGB, um, and I messed it up again. Uh, one, four, three, one, eight, eight, one, four, three. Then only two are failing. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Dark C green. Let's just replace all of these. And so now it's only two failing. Oh, one failing. Oh yeah, because the name to the name is the same. And dark sea green, so this needs to be, we already got that, it's so annoying. The thing I used to use to do this, like projecting and jumping around in Vim was a lot better. And I keep expecting it to work the same, but it doesn't, which is frustrating. Um, so let's just check for false as well. Um, to name returns false when not matched. Or something along those lines. Probably not good English, but whatever your plan one. Const out equals color. I think you can see this as well. Um, does not exist. T dot is false. I'm pretty sure. I think you can do that. Yeah. Cool. So that's all of it tested. That's it. That's like the whole thing. Um, that should be pretty much 100% test coverage. What I want to test is that this is what was changed today. So what he changed was, or might be a she, I'm not sure. Um, uh, what was it? Color JS? No. <laughs> Let's open up color JS. Ah, uh, I know why this is showing up because it gets this list from Git, and these files are still in Git, but I haven't actually like I deleted them, but they're still in Git. So what I want to change is, oh my God, I can't find the thing. It's too many tabs. This is horrible. This. So it was this, which is obviously completely wrong. And there's the failing test. So this is what he fixed today. They fixed. That's really cool. 
Um, <coughs> so I should probably commit this to a branch. So just open up Maggot and say uh, branch, uh, check out new branch from master, call it um, factor, which isn't actually a word, which annoys me whenever you put refactor into a nothing, it just like comes up squiggly underlined. So stage D's and stage D's. That's a lot of new files. I didn't mean to stage node modules. On stage. So gotta go to git ignore, which we don't have. Cool. Git ignore. Yes, create it. And we're gonna ignore node modules. And then we go git. And stage. We deleted the compiler, JS hint, validate, uh, color, color, make file, and we actually staged these. Cool. And it's actually gonna pick up these renames as well, which is nice. So let's commit that and say, what do we do? Um, deleted cruft and wrote test suite. Cool. And now I can push that up to origin. And that's now up there. Awesome. Um, I can now do, well now I can start refactoring it, to be honest. Let's just clear these out again. Let's just clear it all the buffers out. Get it nice and clean. Swap back to color and do no, it really, it really likes to see these node modules. That's annoying. Even though I put it in the git ignore. Maybe you have to reopen it for that to work or something. Um, let's go to color and go to source color there. So this is all good now. Yeah. Um, keep node even running. First of all, what I want to do is delete this. I hate those things now. Uh, I want to indent the whole thing, which didn't really work that well. So let's say replacing the whole file tab with two spaces globally. Okay. That's indentation fixed, essentially. Um, Carl Bad doesn't like that. Um, DTRT adapt. And then indent file. File, what? He really wants to use tab. That's, that's so strange. Okay, never mind. Uh, most of these semicolons need to go, so I might just try deleting all of them. So substitute semicolon for nothing. Save. Okay, it doesn't like that. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I can't just do it lo uh, globally. I need to say semicolons at the end of the line. Now we're good. So it's all the semicolons gone, and now the only errors remaining are things like expected indentation of six characters but found eight. So this shouldn't be split. In, yeah, it doesn't like these splits and stuff, which is fair enough because neither do I. These functions need spaces after them. I don't like these anymore. Um, I don't like them at all. Uh, it's interesting how past me just styled the code completely differently as well. I think I might even end up deleting every single one of these comments because <laughs> they're just, they're not required. Uh, I, oh, wait, hang on a second. That should fix most of them. Yeah. I think. I don't know, Standard's got this thing where it'll automatically fix a lot of the problems for you, but it's only like the easy ones. 
Uh, standard path, no. Split initialization of R again. Okay, where was that one? This one, yeah. How many more issues are there? Or is that it? That's it, cool. So I can commit this. Stage, commit, um, fix standard limiting issues. Oops. Um, push that and close that. What I should probably do is go to uh, package.json and make sure that uh, lint is here. Yeah, just so I can do npm, I don't think npm lint will work, no. But I can do npm run lint. Cool. And then I can also say uh, pre-publish uh, and that can be npm test or npm run lint and npm test. So what, before I am able to publish uh, the module, it will have to pass both of these, which I think is fair enough. I don't know whether that unlicense is correct there or not, but still. And I commit that. I commit a lot. Uh, Cool, and push. Pushing is just like capital P, lowercase p, which is quite nice. So let's go back to our color file. So there's all these comments, and to be honest, I don't think they, they just add noise. I honestly don't think I want them. Um, I could refactor a bunch of this. I don't think I'm going to do it right now. I think I'm going to leave that for another day because that's not going to teach people anything really. Because um, I was going to do stuff like change these to be um, hashes so that you can do really quick comparisons because this horrible loop here is actually doing these comparisons on all three parts of the array. And if you make it a string, then you can do a, like a dot find on it basically. So I don't really want to touch this core functionality. Um, I should probably get, uh, what's it called, UMD, yeah, it's Universal Module Definition. I want this because it means that you can include it in the browser, uh, but you can also um, uh, damn, how does this thing work? It means you can include it in the browser, but you can also include it in like Node.js. So it works everywhere. Drink. Um, which one do I want? Define the module that works with AMD in browser globals. Uh, if you also want to export global when AMD is in play, return exports. Define the module that works in Node, AMD, and browser globals. I think it's the one I want. Yeah. This one. Although, uh, if you also want to export the global even when AMD is in play, no, I'm going to do this one. This is the one that I want. So what you do is take this. You put that down the bottom. Not like that. Take that. Put it down the bottom. Uh, you remove all the semicolons. So this is where I'm going to return my, my value. Uh, I'm going to delete these comments because I don't like them. Not much of a reason other than that. It's pretty self explanatory what they do. So let's just indent these. Why does it. TTRT adapt. TTRT. Okay. 
Hmm, okay. DTRP just isn't working. It's strange. Um, I might reload Emacs for that. Yeah, I'm gonna. So let's just move Emacs to there and it takes a second to open. It doesn't actually take too long. Oh, I thought it'd be more, but. Um, so I want to open <coughs> color again. And I should be able to indent this copy now. That's still wrong. Cool. Excellent. That's just what I wanted. Good job, technology. Uh, did this in Vim, I wouldn't have a problem. Uh, so they're too long as well. So why is it complaining? Defined is not defined. Awesome. So what I need to do is go to the implementation stick. Okay. So if the only thing is defined is not defined, that just means I need to go into package.json and say stand oh, standard. I always put it in here. Globals. And that is an array defined. So now if I go back to my original buffer, it's defined defined. Yes, yes it is. So now what's it complaining about? It's complaining about something. Oops. What is that? That's an IC. Oh, that's annoying. Passing an unexpected token. Great. That's just that's just wonderful. Um if I say stand is in here. Color is defined but never used, unexpected space between name and paren uh, on what line? 269. Okay. Um, hmm. Oh. Pretty dumb of me. I don't know where this is complaining now, though. Like, why? <laughs> Unexpected space between. Maybe it's just Emacs being dumb. 2691. Huh. And then there's something else complaining about functions on 271. How odd. I think it's these. Yeah, it doesn't seem to like this IIFE thing. Huh, okay. So what I need to do is put that in here and say return and then just indent this by one. Oops. All wrong. Okay. So I'm going to use a visual block and I'm going to say insert two spaces. Oh, wow, well, that's slow in comparison. Still wrong. What are you complaining about now? Spaces, of course. So let's just clear those out. Um, I think, yeah, white space cleanup. Let's just check what is standard complaining about. Nothing. Awesome. 
So now I can say that this is wrapped in a UMD. So depending on how you import it now, it works differently. <coughs> so the next step that I need to do is go to the package.json and I need to use unpackage. I don't know if I even want to minify this to be honest. Like, do I care? I don't think I do. I think it's small enough that I don't care. So what I want to do is to go to uh, my React for DOM repo. Um, React for DOM, where is it? That's not it. No, it's not it. Um, hang on. So this, I want to have this kind of like static linked one, which is big for React for DOM, but uh, for everything else it won't be. Like this is going to be quite small. So where is it? This one is in here somewhere. I think you just set this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you just set this. So, yeah, you see it's got this diff. So, what I'll do is simply set files to an array that array will hold src cool uh, I need to find a npm uh, name as well because I don't think color is going to be available so let's just go to color that's going to be taken right yes it is thought so so let's call it oligol color or color oligol That will have to do oligal color. So name oligal color. Cool. That's not even what I wanted. I've just closed Emacs. Never mind. I think that's kind of like the bane of people that their lives for people that use Emacs. Um, Nice unique package name. <laughs> and I'm going to try just publishing this now, I think. Or, first of all, what I should do is uh, just update the README quickly. So, uh, let's color. Me and let's say I'm in the wrong readme. That's not even mine. That's mine. Uh, you start, so let's just say like just, just put the uh, header on it. Use the convert colors. Simply run. So this is all still valid right now. Let's say instead of this, let's get my normal footer because. I like using this unlicensed. So let's just drop that on there. Uh, which is, I think, is this block a UCP? So So it's got my 
Twitter domain unlicensed call and we'll just go to un unlicensed because this is a file as well. Yep, raw copy, yep, unlicensed, yep, cool, yes, paste. Now that's created. Uh, let's get the readme again. And so that's kind of an introduction. But I can then say, like, um, and find this library on npm under what I call color or at. Um, PKG CDN. So I can't remember how this works. I think it's it's going to be local color. I don't know if this redirects as well. Probably not. SLC color.js. Yeah, I know that's not bound, but. Uh, if I go to react flow dom and I remove this, does it redirect? It does. Awesome. So let's just go to oracle color slash slc slash color dot js. And I will link that. Or, um, Yank it. Cool. Perfect. Uh, I should probably quote that or something. And I should probably link to unpackage. So let's just go to unpackage.com. Yank that. Put that there. Cool. Um, so I'm telling people that they can get it from npm or they can go to unpackage if they want to include it into their browser. Um, yeah, I'll just tell people how they can use it now. Because I've never mentioned that before, which is odd. Um, So they're all executed before publish. So I'm not going to bother building it anymore because I don't really need the minified version. There's no point. It's so small anyway. You don't save that much data. Uh, if people want to minify their source code, they can do it through Webpack or whatever anyway if they're using Node. If they're doing it through the CDN, well, eh, meh. Maybe somebody will ask for it one day. And in that case, I'll create like a dist directory and I'll point people at the dist one. Um, but for now, I think that'd be fine. Um, what I also want to do is rename the repo to lowercase color because that's getting on my nerves. I think I get one redirect, so I can rename it color. Okay, it's, it's completely fine with that. Cool. So if I go over to this refract branch and I create the pull request. Cool. Um, let's just make sure that this reads okay. So you can find this library on, the M on npm under Oracle Color or on unpackage CDN at blah 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 blah. It's distributed with a UMD wrapper, so you can use it via AMD, Node.js, or a browser global. Simply execute npm test to run the tape test, then npm run lint to run the standard linter. 
they were all executed before I publish. Uh, do without me, my own license. Cool. That's a lot better. So I can commit this. Add the unlicense. Improve readme mention installation and usage. Cool. Most people should be able to work it out from that. Uh, I've got test running. I haven't actually refactored it. What I've done is refactored the project and made it accessible and written test. Um, I don't particularly want to do a refactor right now, even though I can. Um, I, I don't know if it needs it, to be honest. I just don't think it's worth it because I don't know. I can do, but there's literally no need to. It works fine. I'll be doing it for the sake of it. The fact that I've just tested it all the way through and everything works fine kind of gives me a lot of confidence. So I think I'll probably leave it at that. Let's just publish it to NPM. Um, so let's get another terminal. And let's do, uh, where was I? Uh, hello. Um, is there something to do? No, sorry, that's just, um, that's just Emacs being weird. Yep. Um, so if I merge this now, what's gonna happen? It's probably going to break it for some people because there may be some people that depend on the repository directly, which will be interesting. And I'm very, very sorry if that does happen. But all you do have to change is the path. Like it's SRC slash color instead of just color at the top level now. So that's not so bad. Speaking of which, uh, I've just realized something. Uh, the main here. Oh, I did pick it up. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, keywords is color. To be honest, all of these um, uppercase ones can be lowercase now. Cool. Uh, all I depend on is tape and faucet. That's dead dependencies. Yep. that and push that cool I think that's that so let's merge it I, I think it's gonna be fine I mean like unless you take some risks you're never gonna get anywhere so confirm merge delete branch now if I do ever feel like I'm gonna change the code I'm gonna refactor it I can actually be confident about it like I can say well the tests pass so it's probably fine um, before I could not do that so now I've got here, like that doesn't exist yet, but I've got unpackage, a local color, uh, engine test, NPM run main, cool, and a little unlicensed down here. Uh, and then this in here as well, cool. And then I've got my source and my tests. Oh dear, I've got a file there that I don't want. So let's delete that. I'm gonna do that on master now. Uh, what a rebel. So let's go to master and we need to uh, sorry, I need to fetch from upstream, which is fu as a command, uh, and I want to rm test color, because that's not what I want. So remove that empty test file and just push to master, because why not? Cool. Uh, I don't know if you notice, but this little lambda changes, like goes up a case. That's what an uppercase lambda is. It does that when I need to push something. It gets this underscore when there's like something in git status. And it's a normal lambda when there's nothing. Uh, I actually did this in bash, I think initially. And then when I moved over to fish, which is this shell, uh, I ported the whole thing over. And that's all in my dot files. If you go to my GitHub, um, you can actually just wholesale rip this shell out. Hey, look, it's me. Uh, yeah, in these dot files, you can go into fish functions. And I think it's, yeah, is git ahead, is git dirty, all these functions I wrote t 
to be able to work these things out. And then I build it into a prompt. I think it's like prompt dot fish if you I can't remember. Um, so let's push this. <coughs> so npm publish. It should, yep. So it's doing the linting and the testing. And now it's gonna publish. And it's published. Now I can go to this is really damn quick. I can go here and refresh, and there it is. It's the little color library. Now can I go here? Yep. Yes, I can. And there you go, hosted. So I can go into uh, JS Fiddle and I can say uh, external resources, this, and I can say JavaScript console.log color. Probably a bad thing to use as a global. Color is not defined. Okay. I mean, it should be. Is it because I've got AMD? <coughs> um. That should be annoying if this doesn't work. Let's log the window and see what's out there. I don't know if JS Fiddle gives you um, I'm not gonna be able to find it here, am I? It may be because it doesn't like the name colour, <laughs> to be honest. Um, Oh, I can't see it. Doesn't help that I've got that tiny window. Should have made that bigger. Um, I don't know if that's going to work. Do I have to give it? Hmm. It might be because it's not loaded yet. Can I say... No, I'll load should be fine. <coughs> ah. I think I know why. Maybe. Do I ever reference myself? I don't think I do. I can go with this. I hope. Yeah, it's just not defined. It's annoying. So if I say uh, script type but actually, can I see it on the network? Color.js. Yep, there it is. Let's just do an HTML file on my hard drive. So we'll do uh, test.html, uh, create buffer, and script type. I don't think we can do that anymore. SLT equals that. Double quotes and then another one, and I can put in here on the wrong color. Then, can I just open this file? Repose, 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 repose. I'm going blind, I'm so tired. Repose. Hello. 
Test that HTML. What do we get? Can I find? Interesting. Interesting. Uh, oh. No. Huh. Oh, hang on. Does it tell you to give it a name in... I think I meant to rename that there. I think I meant to say color. Yeah, pretty sure I am. Because this one, that's a define, that's fine. And logic to exports, that's fine. Yep, that's what I'm doing wrong. Cool. So all I have to do is like npm uh, version patch or first of all, commit this. And say uh, fix color global export. That's the problem. Push that. And the inversion patch. This bump patch version. Uh, and add the tag. Push it with tags. npm publish. <coughs> cool. And then we want to say that. Uh, I'm going to use vim. I can open it really quick. Oops, I've opened the wrong one. Test that HTML. Uh, I want to use 1.1. I hope that's using 1.1. No, it's not. And it's because I'm using Emacs binding. There we go. Finally. So I can see it here color.names.aqua. Awesome. Color dot to X aqua. Yeah. Sweet. So that's now published. So I can remove this thing now. Because um, who needs that? And I think we're done. I, I could go in and refactor this now. Um, I may well do soon. I think this is quite enough here. This is going to be a lot of gigabytes of video. You can see my hard drive space slowly ticking down. Um, yeah, this is still a bit nasty and I don't like all the comments and I kind of want to delete them all. But I think that requires just being awake, having coffee, thinking it through. Um, and I would only really do that if it's buggy or slow and it's not. So that's just kind of yak shaving for the point of yak shaving. The fact that I now have a test suite and that has to run before it deploys and it's actually deployed somewhere and there's instructions about where you go and get it and how you include it. I think that's good enough. That's a massive improvement. So yeah, I hope this has been useful and I will link the post in the description. Um, feel free to come and talk about this. Maybe even do a pull request or something. Do whatever you want. Cheers.